Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna share with you a way to achieve clean architecture in your React projects. I've been using it over the past year and it has served me really well both in my personal and professional projects. And before we get started, I just wanna give you a little bit of background and theory behind this concept. And this is something that I haven't made myself, but there is actually a well-established uh, book in software engineering called uh, Clean Architecture by Uncle Bob, as well as a series of videos by Nir Kaufman on how to apply this concept to front-end development, all the links to which you can find in the description of this video. But let me explain the gist of this concept. Imagine if you could split your project into three separate distinct layers, each responsible for their own part. For example, you would have a presentation layer, in other words, your views, you would have your application or business logic layer, where you would describe your use cases, and you would also have your infrastructure layer, which would supply a data for your project. Now I want you to think about the frequency at which uh, all of these layers would change. For example, you have your application, a business logic layer, uh, which doesn't change very often because once you develop uh, the whole application, it uh, tends to stay the same. On the other hand, you have your infrastructure and presentation layers, which are more likely to change because they depend on external factors. Uh, for example, infrastructure depends on the backend infrastructure, your API calls, your customer data, etc. And your presentation layer depends on current web development trends, uh, deprecated libraries, or even uh, if you want to extend your presence to another platform, such as mobile or desktop. And if you put your application layer in the same basket as the presentation and infrastructure layers, there is an inherent risk of introducing new bugs into the business logic as well as generally slowing down the development and changing the presentation or infrastructure layer. That's why it makes sense to put our application layer at the core of our development and uh, make it independent of presentation and infrastructure layer. And by independent, I mean literally your business logic doesn't know anything about your presentation and infrastructure layers. This way, our application logic becomes easily testable and we can port it across different platforms. Shall our business grow? Okay, so let's take a look at the last slide before actually diving into the code. On this diagram, you can see a real life example of how you can use a clean architecture for your front-end project. The application layer may consist of the main entities of the application state, uh, some complex computations, analytics tracking code, as well as constants, and perhaps many more. The infrastructure layer uh, is responsible for making API calls, uh, doing some data transformations uh, to the data retrieved, uh, accessing the local storage, as well as choosing the right environment config. Uh, the presentation layer uh, consists of React and Browser DOM, and it can be potentially switched to React Native, Chrome extension, Electron, etc. And the reason it can be switched is because in our application layer, we are not binding ourselves to any platform specific features. And the last thing to note in this diagram is the nature of dependencies between the three layers. The presentation layer simply imports the application layer because it wants to use its data 
and that happens by means of ES6 imports or CommonJS imports, while the infrastructure layer uses the dependency injection and inversion of control in order to inject its methods and data into the application layer. And you'll see how to do it in a moment. All right, so now that you're familiar with the concept of clean architecture, let's see how it can be implemented in React. The project is called Essential To-Dos, and it's basically a list of to-dos that are fetched from the REST API. There are three main sections in this project, the application, the views, and the infrastructure. The application layer uses Redux in order to fulfill the business logic. All of this business logic is mostly implemented in Redux middleware. And the reason for that is convenience and an ability to inject dependencies from the infrastructure, which we'll see in a moment. The project is bootstrapped with Create React App, and the data that we're fetching is from the dummy REST API server, which we'll also see in a minute. Let's head over to our application and see how it works in the browser. Here we have a list of dummy to-dos. And those to-dos are coming from the JSON placeholder API, which is a fake online REST API for testing and prototyping. If we scroll down, we will see that they have an API for to-dos. Now let's get back to our project and let's try to throttle our request to make the network a little bit slower. And let's try to refresh our page. We can see a loading indicator while the to-dos are fetched and then we have a list of to-dos. Upon clicking on a to-do, we can toggle its completion status. Now, if we open our Redux DevTools, we'll see a complete history of our actions. And this is our actions, and they have been named spaced by different sections in our application logic. Now, let's head over to Visual Studio Code and see how this project is organized. As you can see, we have three major sections in our project. We have an application, we have infrastructure, and we have views. And we also have this index.js file, which serves as an entry point to our application. Now, the link to the source code is available in the description of this video, so you can check it later. This entry point is used as a glue to our three layers. Here we have a Redux provider that accepts the store, which we'll take a look a little bit later. We have an app component, which is our view. And we also have services which are coming from our infrastructure project. And they're being injected into our application logic, as you will see later. Now, let's actually start exploring our projects. And we'll start with the simplest component, which is our view. Now, let's take a look at this component. There are two things to note here. The first is the component is taking the state from the application logic using the React Redux hooks. And in the case of the loading state, if the loading is happening, then the component is rendering the loading to-dos. Otherwise, it's looping over the available to-dos and rendering them. Upon clicking on the to-do, it dispatches the action creator called put to-do passing over the modified data. The second thing to note about this component is upon mounting, it dispatches an event called page loaded. And this event is further propagated into the application logic. And our view doesn't really need to know what's happening in the application logic. All it needs to do is it needs to dispatch appropriate actions on user interaction and it needs to render the data. Let's take a closer look at what happens to this event in the application logic. We'll need to close our view section and we'll need to open our application layer. Our application layer is built using Redux, 
and so we expect the standard Redux folder structure, except maybe the middleware, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. So if we go to our actions and UI, we can see our action thrown by the view component. Let's take a look at the diagram which shows the flow of data in Redux. Now here is the data flow diagram in Redux. Our view component has dispatched an action called page loaded. In a basic Redux setup, that action gets to the reducer where it gets reduced to the state. But it is possible to set up a middleware, which is a set of functions that act one after another on this action, and they are able to filter it out to transform or to dispatch other actions. In this particular diagram, it takes an action and it fetches data from the API server. After that data has been fetched, it gets to the reducer, which exposes it to the combined state to the views. Now let's head over to our example. Here is our page loaded action and let's see how it gets to the middleware. In the middleware we have a UI section where we are looking if this action is page loaded and if this action type or is of page loaded then we want to dispatch another action in return which is load to do's and this way we are able to decouple our logic based on the domain in this particular case the ui middleware doesn't care about our to do's all it cares about is that it received a page loaded event and it has to do something in return so we are dispatching an instruction to load to do's and we are also logging some message now, if we take a look at this load to do's action creator, we can see that it's a very simple action with type load to do's. Let's actually see what happens when we dispatch that action. For that, we'll need to go to our to do's middleware and to check what's happening when the action type is load to do's. When the action type is load to do's, we are dispatching a set of other actions and the first action is to set the loading indicator for the better user experience we want to set the loader to let the user know we are fetching something the next thing is we are getting our to do's from the api then we are taking those to do's and we are dispatching another action which is called load to do's success and finally, we are setting our loader indicator to false. Let's actually check this load to do success action and see what it's doing. All right, so this load to do success action creator is taking the to do's and it's putting the to do's in the payload. Perhaps this action gets to the reducer. Let's actually check. If we go to reducers and to do's yes we are actually listening to the load to do success action and we are populating our redux store with our to do's now there is something i've been silent about all this time and if we go to our to do's middleware we can see that this api object is actually not being imported like we usually do but instead of that we are injecting it as an argument to this middleware and this is my friends how the dependency injection looks like in the redux middleware now let's actually check how it works as you can see this middleware is not your typical middleware how you expect it to be in redux it actually has one more higher order function which receives different services from the infrastructure layer but how do we actually wire it up together? Let's go to our entry point, because as I have mentioned, it loops everything together. This entry point receives the services from the infrastructure project and it injects the services into the store. Let's check this configure store method. 
This configure store receives services and it maps over each middleware and calls its first higher order function. Now you might be wondering how this services object gets initialized and let's actually go to the infrastructure and let's check it out. The services object has two services as of now. It has the log service and it has an API service. The log service is injected dynamically depending on the environment that we have. If we have a development environment, we simply inject the console log. Otherwise, we inject our Elasticsearch logger. For the demonstration purposes, I have hard-coded the environment variable. Let's actually head to the middleware and see where this log service is being used. This log service is being injected into the page loaded flow, which is a UI middleware. And when the page gets loaded, it simply logs the event out. Let's head over to the browser and see the console log. So right now, the event is being sent to the Elasticsearch. Why is that? It's because if we go to our service right now, we have a production environment and this production environment actually calls this Elasticsearch logger. If we head over there, we can see that we actually mocked the Elasticsearch logger with just a simple console log. This is exactly what we are expecting. If we change the environment to development, we should expect the logger to be a simple console log. That's correct. So guys, this is how you inject your dependencies to the application layer. And your application layer doesn't know anything about other layers. In fact, your other layers depend on the application because the application layer exposes a service contract that the infrastructure service, for example, has to adhere to. Let's check our API service. Our API is a simple object that at the moment has only one method, which is get all. And it's an asynchronous method that returns the response data. Now, as long as we maintain the same contract between the infrastructure and the application layers, the application layer doesn't really care what's happening here. We can change our HTTP client, or we can even change our source from the REST API to any other source. Let's say, for example, the file system. Now, the beauty about application layer being at the core of the application is that it can easily be ported to any other platforms such as React Native, Electron, etc. Because this, at the end of the day, is just a simple JavaScript. And it doesn't depend on any infrastructure or any platform. Another cool thing about this structure is that because we're using dependency injection, it now becomes super easy to test our components. Let's check our todos test.js. We describe our todos middleware. Within it, we describe our load todos flow, which is just a unit middleware within this pipeline. And here we're simply already structuring our load todos flow. We construct dummy to do and a mock API client. And our unit tests are very simple and maintainable. I would like to know your opinion about this clean architecture and what patterns have you been using in your React projects. Leave the comments below the video and don't forget to subscribe if you want more of such content. And I'll see you in the next video.